What if I told you I machined this part with just a few clicks? What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Machine Shop Talk, we're gonna be diving back into the wild world of AI assisted programming. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so as promised today, we are going to be diving back into the wild world of AI assisted programming. If you saw the last video we did on this one, we did a very small part, we played around with it. Today, we're gonna to be doing a few things a little bit different. For those of you who haven't seen our interviews with them at the trade shows, CloudNC has released Cam Assist and it keeps getting updated every time it feels like I go on my computer. This is a software that keeps getting worked on all the time. But what's really exciting is last time, if you saw me program it, it was in Fusion. While Fusion's a great software, I'm not the most familiar with it. I'm more of a master cam guy. And now Cam Assist is out of beta and completely functional with master cam. We're gonna go throw this model into master cam 2025, use Cam Assist and take a look to see if it can really make a part like this with just a few clicks to get us most of the way there. Come on, let's go. So the question of course is how do we get from here to there? So here we have my file. All I've done is I've set up this STF file of our part and the vise. This is actually just a model of the vise I found online, same one we're using downstairs or at least close enough. So I've got my part set up. Now the biggest thing about Cam Assist is it's gonna do 80% of the work with just a couple of clicks. But there is a caveat to that because of course, you know, if I could just install the software, press go and away we go, that'd be great. But a lot of this comes down to how well you set up your tool libraries. So essentially, you know, a lot of you guys who use repetitive tooling or, you know, you do a lot of programming, typically you'll have all your tool libraries already set up. So this is already going to be very easy for you. So I went ahead and I set up my tool library so Canvasys knows what tools it's going to be pulling. So let's say all that's already done. I've got my stock set up. So all I'm gonna do now is go into, you can see up here in my master cam, it says Cloud NC. I'm gonna click on my cam assist and hit cam assist. It's gonna go check for, <laughs> and look at this guys. I programmed this up originally yesterday and already there's a new update. So we're just gonna say no to that because I wanna show you guys how this works. We have our cam assist right here. We have our tool library already set up. We have our machine, our machining mode. You know, you can go back to our previous video on this to see the details of this. I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time on this because I really wanna get machining. But we have our machine groups. We have our, um, which angle of the part it's gonna be hitting it from. We're gonna say everything here looks okay. Going over to tool use. Again, this is where I'm gonna have my tool library. You can see right here at the top. I'm gonna select my stock material, which in this case is gonna be aluminum, because I wanna make this part look really pretty today. And then I can go down below here, and this is where my tool library really lives. So this is all the tools that I have in my MasterCam tool library. Um, you can see the different parameters that I have in there. So right now we're talking about aluminum. You can see it can also be used for different material groups and operations. So, you know, for this uh, 3 8 bull nose end mill, you can see, I'm gonna let it rough, I'm gonna let it finish, I'm gonna let it wall finish, I'm gonna let it helical bore. I can go through and turn these on or off. Let's say for whatever reason in my machine, I really don't like helical boring with a half inch. I prefer to use something smaller like a 3 8 I can go and adjust what it's gonna let that do. Essentially what this all comes down to is Camasys is gonna look at all your parameters that you set up for the way you like to program things and the tools you like to use and use them like that. So again, it's, a lot of it is the setup. If you take the time to really set it up, you're gonna be very, very quick to program with this. So we're gonna say that's fine. Advanced, again, this is when we go through here, you can see our tool path types, face milling, roughing, detailed roughing, finishing, hole making. And if you hold over these, you can see where all the details on the, these come up. Spot drilling, deburring. I wanna machine the full part. You know, in some cases I don't wanna machine the full part. Maybe I'm doing a different op. 
Um, maybe it's going from this machine to a different machine, so from a mill to a lathe, but it gives you the option. Uh, for roughing, again, I can make sure I'm leaving enough stock on there for the finisher. Maybe I don't have a machine that has a lot of uh, rigidity to it. Maybe it's got a bit of backlash. Maybe I want to leave a little more on those walls to finish. I can do that right here. And again, essentially, it's going to go through and ask me, do I want to deburr? Well, do I want a ball mill? Because you can use a ball mill to do that. Or do I want to use a chamfer mill? For finishing my freeform operations, do I prefer a waterline type path? Or do I prefer something like a hybrid, which may be more like a scallop or a, um, a raster tool path? So we're going to leave that one there. And let's just go ahead and hit OK. So now it's going to go through, collect all my part data. It's going to look at the step file, figure out what it wants to do. OK, so now we can see this is done. You can see where my avoidance geometry is. Um, you can see the part in there. But more importantly, let's take a look at the tool paths. So let's backplot this thing. So if I go and run this backplot, it's going to run pretty quick. But you can see we're going to get our facing operations done, our roughing. It's going and doing all our holes. And it's actually going into the second op there because I didn't specify for it to stop. A lot of this part's going to be from that second op. So let's open that up there. If we go to op two. So op one, we're doing the backside. If you look here, you can see it's just doing the backside. It's going to rough all that out from our sock, put our holes in, do everything from the back that it has to do. When we flip this over to our op two and G55, you can see this is where it's doing a lot of the detail work of the part. So if we go back into this, so I just select my machine group two, which is going to be my op two. So just make sure that is all selected. It is. Let's back plot that just to take a peek. So you can see here, it's going to go finish doing our roughing. This is going really fast. We're going to see this in the machine, but you can see it's done all of this on its own. Now, what I will do before I run this, you know, this is very, very good software. I think no matter what, and Cloud NC with Cam Assist thinks you should do this too. Now, this is going to get me 80% of the way there. No matter what, I'm going to want to go through and make sure that this is actually doing what I want. I haven't seen this crash yet or anything like that, but sometimes it's going to be plunging straight into material because it thinks I might be using a carbide drill. Well, we use high-speed seal, seal drills here, so I want to go and change that. Or maybe I think it's a little too aggressive or doing a couple unnecessary operations when it's doing the finishing. I can go in and check all those, remove a couple. You know, it's not like it gives you this program and then you're stuck with it. It just generates it the same way you would program something. So I can go in and adjust all my feeds and speeds. I can adjust the step over. I can do pretty much whatever I want. It's just saving me all the grunt work of selecting every curve, or selecting every hole, putting in every single depth of, uh, every single pack depth and every single step over. So I'm gonna go through this, but we're gonna go downstairs, we're gonna run this thing, let's go. So to start off, we're gonna start by facing that off. We're using a three inch face mill. We are going to be skipping ahead in this program because this is a long program. So I'm gonna show you kind of the highlights and what this can do. So we're using a half inch end mill now to rough this part out. Um, not only is it roughing, it's going to do the helical bores and it's also going to do the finishing both on the bores from this side and it's going to do the uh, outer perimeter. So you can see it's automatically adjusting its feeds and speeds and you can see on the sides of that right there, that worked out very, very well. So let's move on. This is now going to go ahead and spot drill everything. So you can see we're just using a, uh, I believe it's a half inch spot drill. That is not sped up. That is the actual speed of the program. Now here, this is one thing I did have to catch. It wanted to go ahead and plunge all our holes. I did change that to a peck drill. Um, you know, you can see I was a bit conservative with my speeds and feeds here because I just did it in the controller. But you know, if you're using high end tooling, you're using carbide drills, you could just plunge the way it wants to. You can't really fault it for that. So now we're going to be drilling the second set of holes. Unfortunately, this is aluminum. Um, I don't have a mister, so we do have a lot of cool in here, but I promise to show you this part between every op. So we're done our holes now, but it would be nice if that was deburred. Now there was a large chamfer on the back here, so it's gonna go ahead and do that with a, I believe that's a half inch chamfer mill insertable. Now it's gonna come in and we're gonna do our deburring. And you can see one thing that's really nice about this that's a little scary to get used to is that it gets just above that part in terms of clearance. So you have to learn to trust the machine, but as long as you have your avoidance set up, it's gonna work well. 
So let's flip that part over. We're going to do op two now. You can see that we are going to go ahead and start finishing this part from the other side. Uh, starting off with roughing with a half inch end mill. We're going to be taking that part down. Most of that material is actually going to be removed. So now you can see we're getting a little closer and you can see this is going to use those tricoidal um, tool paths to make sure we are getting as much efficiency out of here as we can. Um, for the record, I didn't optimize any of the speeds and feeds on here. These are all straight out of Cloud NC. Um, I feel like it was a very big learning experience for me to trust it, but we didn't break any tools. Everything worked out quite well. So you can see we're now going in and doing some of that pocketing. You can see that it's semi-roughed for those uh, angled surfaces around those two bosses. Um, the one thing I do find this software does, and it's not a bad thing, it's just something you need to be aware of, is it really likes finishing things in multiple steps. It wants to make sure you are getting as close to that part as possible. So we're going to go ahead now and we're going to start semi-roughing down those angled portions. That's a quarter inch uh, two flute ball nose. And now we're going to go in and start finishing the insides of those bosses as well. So you can see that's after roughing operations. You can still, we still got some cleanup to do. We are going to be going back in, um, cleaning up those little holes around the perimeter of the boss. I believe that's using a 1 8 end mill. I'm going to skip ahead on this one quite a bit because it, uh, it really wants to make sure it gets in there. Did a great job. You know, it did not break those little end mills, even though it was going down quite far. So we're going to be going ahead and roughing this all out. And again, if I want this to use less tools, if I want to um, maybe do absolutely everything with a 3 8 instead of switching between a half inch and a 3 8 I can do that. Um, it's all about your tool library. I can also go in and manually edit everything in Mastercam afterwards as well. So we're going in, we're starting to finish this part off. Um, it really wants to make sure it's getting in the corners there. Here you can see it's taking its time getting right in to finish those walls. Um, and you can see it, although it took its time there, it did a really, really good job. Look at the walls on the insides of those pockets. They are exactly where we want them to be. So we're going to go around. This is actually finishing the flats of this part right now. Um, it does do a very good job of automatically selecting its own speeds and feeds for surface finish. I was very impressed by this. Again, we're going to be going in and cleaning up those little holes around the uh, angle bosses there. This is something that I probably would have taken out. Um, depending on what your tolerance is on the part, you may not need to finish the same thing multiple times. It's, you got to remember, it's software. So it's trying to make sure this part is as accurate to the model as possible. Maybe for your application, you want to cut some cycle time. You can delete those. Again, this gets you 80% of the way there. I modified just about nothing except for um, that drilling tool path, switching it to a pack because I really wanted to see what it could do. So you see this part is developing. We're gonna go ahead and add our countersinks now. So it's automatically picking up what those countersinks were in the model. I did not define how deep these countersinks are. This is something it knows on its own. Uh, same thing if you have chamfers and edge breaks, it will automatically detect the size of those and make tool paths to do them. So it's not something you need to do on your own. And you can see that worked out very, very well, even though we were getting close to the wall and it was uh, a bit nerve wracking. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna finish these bosses. I did cut quite a bit of this footage out because it does take quite a while. You know, it is a very fine finishing operation. That's not a Cloud NC thing. That's not a Canvas thing. That is a programming thing. And you can see this spits out normal G-code. Uh, we're running 100% uh, feed, 100% rapid. Uh, we are just letting this thing go. We did add M00s between the ops because I was nervous and I will tell you that I probably didn't have to. It didn't do anything silly. Um, it went ahead and ran this part. Total runtime was about two hours for this part. And you can see that finishing, a lot of that was that finishing on those angles. But you can see if you need a really fine finish, it is going to do well. So let's finish this part. Let's go in with our chamfer tool path. This is a quarter inch uh, drill mill, 45 degree. It's gonna go in, it's gonna finish all our little cusps. It's detecting everything we need to do there. And you can see there is our finished part. Um, it looks gorgeous. Finishes are all really nice. It's deburred the way it should be from both sides. Uh, I did run a comparison on the, of this on the 
uh, Mastercam, you know, when you run a sim simulation, you can see in comparison, it was almost 100% green, except for a couple little tool paths I needed to change, uh, which I could have if I wanted to. So you can see, look at that. That is our finished part. So there you have it, guys. I hope this was interesting for you. Um, this is a software and a concept that keeps getting built on and developed more and more as the days go by. Um, as I said at the top of this video, it seems like this is a field that keeps expanding every time you turn around and look at it. If you haven't had a chance to check out Cloud NC's Cam Assist yet, I highly recommend you do um, for nothing else than to get yourself familiar with it. You know, one thing that people keep saying is, oh, I can't believe you trust AI to program your parts. Well, guys, this is the same thing people said when cam systems came out. I can't believe you're going to let your computer write the code for that instead of writing your own NC program. So this is something that I think everybody needs to be aware of. Um, it's going to become more prominent. So I would highly recommend you go check out Cam Assist from Cloud NC right now. Thank you very much for watching, guys. As always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thanks again, guys. You take care.